everybody, welcome to another week here on the Aussie Lawn. Uh, we're now, what are we now? Heading into mid-August. The August winds have sort of hit now. Traditionally for us here, uh, August, September is the, the windy period. I thought today we'd come back on this putting green here because it's actually not looking all that wonderful. I have neglected a little bit. I, I, I didn't actually keep applying um, the plant doctor stuff as regularly as I wanted. It's time to give that... Um, get back on that bandwagon give that another hit but i thought what we'd do today is something a little bit different because we are now on the edge of starting to think about our spring renovations and that's when things are really going to take off for for everyone including myself uh, so i thought what we'd do is let's do a soil ph test of this green i'm just curious to see what it's at ideally anywhere from 5.5 to 6.5 for cooch somewhere there so if we called it six, I'd be happy with that. That's smack bang in the middle. Um, so yeah, I've got a one of those pro, what are they called? I'm looking at you now. Pro pluggers, those um, plugging tools from America. I managed to get one of those when the exchange rate wasn't as bad as it is now. So we'll use it to get down to the right depth. And um, yeah, let's crack on. Right, well it still mows really well it comes up really nicely and unlike the last time we spent an episode here on the green where we got bugger all off it um, we are getting a fair bit of clippings so it's been probably oh, five five days ago since I cut this last you can, look you can get away with uh, a five day interval this time of year at this height of cut but in the summer we're gonna have to get back to every every second day uh, mowing regime but anyway look I'm going to show you in the catcher now and you're going to notice something a little bit different there's going to be less leaf but there's going to be more stalky material now this green has been trying to go to seed so it's a little bit little bit hungry a little bit stressed and it, it's a it's a survival mechanism of the plant unfortunately for this plant uh, the seed is not viable it is sterile so you know it, but it doesn't really know that but anyway let's have a look in this catcher and I'll point out these little stalky bits and uh, we'll get up close to the green as well um, so you can see what I'm talking about there and then we'll go righto so you'll see here it's really uh, I'll bring it I'll try and bring some closer it's just cutting stalks and those stalks were trying to be seed heads but a lot of grass a lot of grass indeed so she's definitely growing uh, it's just not growing in a way that makes me happy so we're gonna have to look into sorting that stuff out but yeah that catch has got a fair bit of grass in it's probably quarter quarter full I'd say um, okay so I'm not sure if we're gonna pick this up on the camera but the actual shinier sections a little and I can see it clear as day here but I'm just wondering if you guys can see it at home the shiny patches across the green again are those stalky bits and they're trying to be those seed heads I'm looking at a bit right here um, so you'll see it's just trying to run spread throw seed heads up it's just needs a bit of food okay I guess at this point what I need to do is probably make one thing clear a pH test isn't going to tell you what your nutrient levels are but what it will do is if it's too low or too high it'll indicate to me that nutrients that may already be here in the soil are actually unavailable so as the pH gets too low um, you know certain macronutrients become unavailable so macronutrients nitrogen phosphorus potassium and uh, actually been waiting to use this line and I actually give you a shout out Connor Ward if you're watching this up down and all around so up nitrogen so the first letter in the NPK nitrogen down phosphorus roots K general health of plant all around so up down all around Connor I love it I'm gonna keep using it 
and uh, hope you will, brother. Righto, so got this uh, pro plugging tool here. Now, some of you are probably aware of these things that uh, you lucky buggers in the America in America have got. So the only way we get them here is to uh, pay ridiculous shipping and uh, it's ridiculous uh, currency exchange rates. But I, uh, yeah, I've got one. I'm happy with it, and I might actually use this. I might actually use this when it comes time to plug out the first trial section of the Tiff Dwarf when we change some of this green out. So I reckon this is probably going to be something I'm going to use. Now, what we need to do, we to do a really thorough pH test, you'd probably be best off taking a few samples from around your lawn, mixing those together, and then taking a small sample of your mix to do your test. Now, I'm just going to sort of pick an average section. I'm not going to pick the best section of the green. I'm not going to pick the worst section. I'm just going to pick an average section because in the not too distant future, I'm going to get proper professional soil tests done on this green, which will also give me uh, nutrient levels and things like that. It'll show me if I'm deficient in my N, my P, my K, or any minor uh, micronutrients. So this is just more of a little bit of a, um, a, a test, I guess, to see how accurate the store-bought test kits are. Now, I just went down to the local hardware store and I just bought the one that probably everyone else in Australia's got and uh, it's the it's the chemical test. It's not the, the soil probe one. Uh, I, I had one of those. It, it didn't last and I'm not too sure they're very accurate. So I'm probably more more satisfied to use a, uh, a chemical test and, and we'll work through it and, and show you it's not that hard. It's not that scary. So, all right, well, let's take a core sample and we'll actually have a look at the uh, soil structure of this green too. Righto, so all we need to do now is just tilt him up and hopefully he's gonna come out the other side here. Beautiful. Righto, so here's our little core sample and it's uh, pretty much the appropriate depth. I was chasing that sort of 10 centimeter um, mark and, and we've got that. So we're just gonna take a little sample of this here at the bottom. So you'll notice it's a fairly um, sandy profile, but I did, when I built this green, I did go a heavier silt content. Uh, silt, not as, as silt as in uh, clay particle, just to hold a bit more moisture and a bit more nutrient. Uh, if this was a bent green, it would have been a much more sandy, uh, sandy soil profile. But for cooch and this conditions, I went heavier on purpose. Right, so this is our little test kit here. It's um, made by Manutech, and yeah, so it says here good for up to 100 soil tests. I think I've only used this once before on a garden. I've actually never used it on the green, so. Uh, we're going to learn something together today. Uh, what's it say here? Yep, so depth around 10 to 15 centimetres. So I've gone the 10 because obviously um, that's sort of the main growing region of the roots for the for the grass. Um, and it says here half a teaspoon equivalent. So not very much soil at all. So we'll take it from the base here. Add a few drops of liquid indicator, just enough to stir this into a thick paste. Righto, so what do we got in here? A little mixing plate. It's a windy day, this will probably all blow away. I might have to move, I think. Stirrer. Powder. Some other funky looking liquid. Um, oh yeah, and our color chart that we're gonna use. Uh, to get the final results. Gonna have to move, I think. This is gonna all blow away. Let's try again. It'll take a little bit. It's probably more than half a teaspoon. Um, take a bit of weight. Here we go. A few drops of indicator pH dye. Let's 
and stir it into a paste. It's probably worth mentioning too at this stage, when you're taking soil to do a test, make sure you've got no roots of the plant, no stalks, no stems, no leaves, no runners, no stylons. You just want the soil itself. And we added a few drops to the paste. Uh, sorry, a few drops to the little soil sample here to uh, stir it into a into a paste. And then we take this stuff here um, and dust it. And it's uh, whatever this this now goes. Probably shouldn't be stirring it, I think. Um, might just put a little bit more because I think I just made a little error there, but anyway, not to panic. We'll see what colour it goes and we'll measure it against this here. So, as I said before, we're hoping between five and a half and six and a half is what we're aiming for. So judging by this now, my pH is probably a little bit neutral. It's sitting at 7, so really probably want to bring that pH down a little bit to 5 and a half, as I said, between 5 and a half, 6 and a half, so probably a little bit neutral, so it could probably make it a little bit more acidic. So as I look at it, yeah, I'm going to say it's smack bang on, on 7. I wish this wind would just stop for a minute and make life easier. Right, so all we're going to do just we're going to put a little bit extra, um, just a little bit extra soil in the hole there. Put our little pour back in. Pat him down, and uh, that's it. Now it's going to be interesting to see. As I said, when I get this professional test done, probably going to get that done in the next four to six weeks. Um, then we'll be able to work out exactly what's going on. But as I said, being seven, we could probably add a little bit of sulfur just to help bring that down, down to sort of that ideal range. If I could bring it down to six, I'd be pretty happy. Um, and obviously, if you wanted to raise pH, you'd add um, some lime, that sort of thing. So I really didn't know what I was expecting to find when I did this test, but it, it, it's not extreme either way. It's just a little bit, a little bit high for. Uh, for the cooch's uh, personal taste and preference. So, yeah, so anyway, look, that's how we do a at-home soil test. Very straightforward, very easy. Um, highly recommend doing it yourself, even just for your curiosity's sake. Um, if you've got an area of grass that's not really performing and you can't work out why, well, this is gonna give you a fair idea um, of uh, if it's out either way, so if obviously if it's low, you can lock out your major nutrients. If it's high, you can also sometimes lock out your, your minor micronutrients. So to have correct soil pH is to have healthy turf, and then um, yeah, that'll that'll help you along. It's probably too windy now to be spraying any of the um, plant doctor products, so I'm probably going to have to hold out doing that. Um, yeah, so look, anyway, that's probably about all I've got today. Uh, hope you guys have a great week, and we will see you next time here on the Aussie Lawn.